Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 81 and the question is 7. It reads, a particle is projected with speed 10 meters per second at an angle tan inverse 4 thirds to an inclined plane. If the plane makes an angle tan inverse 5 twelfths to the horizontal, find, in terms of g, the time at which the distance travelled parallel to the inclined plane is twice the distance travelled above the inclined plane. So, basically this is asking, when is the range twice that of the, the height? Is there any point at which the range is twice the height? Not the maximum height or the maximum range, just when is any distance along the x prime plane twice that of the uh, distance above the uh, along the y prime plane? All right. So the first thing we need to do is sketch. This is a, this is actually quite straightforward. So we'll sketch the motion. We'll draw our x prime, wrong our x axis and our y axis. I'm going to draw my unit vectors, i hat and j hat. I'm going to draw the plane itself in green. So we draw our incline, excuse me, in green. I'm going to call it the x prime axis. And we draw our y prime axis perpendicular to that. I'm going to draw the initial velocity vector here, u, like so. And we know the initial velocity vector is at an angle alpha to the plane x, uh, x prime, y prime. And we know that, of course, this angle here is beta. We're given what these are, in fact. So we know that tan alpha, tan inverse alpha, is equal to four thirds. Therefore, well, if you just use a bit of trigonometry on that, you'll find that cos is three fifths and sine is four fifths. And also, you'll find that uh, if you look at beta, you'll have tan inverse five over twelve. So you're going to find that cos is twelve over thirteen and sine is five over thirteen. All right, so that that's pretty pretty straightforward. So if, just resolve this vector u. We're going to get u cos alpha i hat plus u sine alpha j hat like so and we're going to get that let me think, think now that's going to be equal to 10 times the cos of alpha which I said was 3 fifths i hat plus 10 times the sine of alpha which was 4 fifths j hat so that becomes 6 i hat plus 8 j hat all right 6 i hat plus 8 j hat so the next thing we need to do is resolve the gravity vector. Now the gravity vector, of course, acts in the negative y direction, like so. So we need to resolve that by drawing, first of all, parallel to the y prime, then parallel to the x prime. It has to be in these directions here. So this is g, we have g sub y, g sub x. And for reasons which I've discussed in the past, in the, in the fact that this angle bisects the, the plane at a, perp at a 90 degrees, this is also beta here. So for that reason, we can resolve it as follows. We can say that g is equal to g sub x i hat plus g sub y j hat g is equal to g times the sine of beta i hat plus g times the cos of beta j hat and g is equal to so that's g times the sine which was 5g over 13 i hat plus 12 g over 13 j hat. Just wanted to note those down here. So, sign, yeah, we're good to go. So now what we can do is rub out all of this and go straight to our uvast. So we have the x prime, the y prime, Like so. Alright. So we found that this was 6, this was 8, this was 12g over 13, and this was 5g over 13. So we need to find out expressions for the distance s sub x and the distance s sub y. So s is equal to ut plus a half at squared, so it's 8t plus g over 2t squared. And this also is uh, ut plus a half at squared, so it works out as six six uh, t plus a half. And that a was that's incorrect. A half at squared. So this just becomes six g over thirteen t squared, and this becomes um, five g over twenty six t squared. 
Alright, so what we want to find out is the time when s sub x is twice s sub y. So I need to multiply this by 2. So I'm going to make this 12, this 16. So I need to find out when this is equal to that. So let's just go straight out and do it. So we have 6t plus 5g over 26t squared is equal to 16t plus 12g t squared over 13. Um, we can bring everything together, that is, that is, let's say we'll bring the, of course, the t squareds together and the t's together. So this becomes 10t. And we get over here, we get 5g over 26 minus 12g over 13 t squared. All right, we want to solve this, so I'm just going to bring all these together. So we're going to have, let's say, uh, will I solve out this? Will I solve that? Sure, look, I may as well just do that out altogether. All right, so 5g over 26, 5, we we'll take out the g. Can we take out the g here? We can. Just take out the g there because we want everything in terms of g. So you have 5 over 26 minus 12 over 13. So 5 divided by 26 is that. And take away from that 12 divided by 13. And we get minus 19 over 26. Like so. And that's equal to 10t. So bring it over here. We get 19g over 26. Uh, times t plus 10 is equal to 0. Times t, excuse me. There we go. That's something we've seen before. We're just solving this quadratic. Alright. So that means that t is equal to 0. And we also know that t is equal to minus 10 times 26 over 19g. So let's just find out what that number is. So you have 10 multiplied by 26 divided by 19. We get an answer of 13.68. So t is equal to minus 13.6 over g. Now remember, time has to be a positive number. And this is a positive number because g is also a negative number. So we know that at t is equal to 13.6 divided by 9.81, the uh, the horizontal range is twice that the perpendicular distance. So let's just find out if that is correct. So 3C, question 3, question 7. So it says 260 over 19, which is exactly actually what we had. And that's correct. That is absolutely correct. So that actually wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching. Please pass it out to your friends and subscribe to my channel.